Hello and welcome back to Tinglewinger 5. Today we're going to be looking at routers for the first time ever. Now this is the Netgear R6300. It is 802.11 AC, not A, not B, not G, not N, AC. This is the next generation of Wi-Fi and I want to get myself prepared. It supports up to 1.3 gigabit. I mean that's impressive over wireless. Now this has a lot of features, parental controls, Wi-Fi convenience, power button so you can turn the Wi-Fi on and off and there's even an app to control it. Uh, we have all these various speeds so you can use all this with this if you buy this model of router and only you can do HD streaming on that because that's how fast the Wi-Fi is. It's all lies, it's all marketing but it's quite impressive to have on the box so that's why it's there. So multiple HD streaming is only available by this router but nothing uses the 802.11ac standard yet. Okay so we get some preset wireless settings as you would expect in the box uh, the actual router itself, of course, so we've got some manuals, no disc, I was surprised to see. Uh, yellow Ethernet cable, that's gorgeous. It's Cat5e, he didn't even give me a Cat6. Uh, yeah, so standard Ethernet cable, random power lead, so it takes a 3-pin Molex, like a PC does, into the power supply. So I went and had a look at this app, it's a Netgear Genie, it's available on both Android and iOS. Opening it up some very standard settings in there it's actually somewhat limited I was a little unimpressed with it but I am doing a degree in computer networks and security uh, it, it works it's functional so the actual router itself it has two USB ports four LAN ports internet port reset power button and a DC the other USB port is on the side powering it up you get a nice white Netgear logo which isn't annoying at all the power button internet light and the Wi-Fi light Uh, once you've set it up, it's all plugged in. Here is the settings menu you get. So it's got attached devices. You can see it's plugged into my desktop PC at the time. Uh, there's not a lot here. It's just standard settings, which is nice. Uh, this is the basic view. I will switch over to the advanced in a minute. Uh, you select your Wi-Fi region because that is important, depending on your channel. You can enable the wireless isolation, which is a nice feature. You can completely separate the wireless network from the rest of your network. So you can have one wired, one wireless. Now, at the moment, this is set to WPA2 PSK because that has not been broken. This router can also broadcast in the 5 GHz spectrum, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, I've put some pictures here, which is comparing the 2.4 GHz spectrum to the 5 GHz spectrum. There is a huge difference, as you can see. I've switched over to 5 GHz. The only problem is not every device supports 5 GHz yet. Uh, you can also enable guest SSIDs, so you can have like a guest network for if you run a hotel and for some reason we're using this router. That is now possible. Uh, into the advanced menu you get a bit more on the front page, so it's using a DHCP connection from my ISP. And into here we've got internet setup, this is DHCP, you might have static, you might have all sorts of crazy DSL stuff, but you might also plug into a modem first. This router is not a modem router, it has no dial-up capability. Uh, a nice LAN setup, this is quite nice. It uses RIP version 1 and version 2, which is fantastic. If you're going to ever use that, which not many of you are, in fairness, thinking about it. Uh, you can turn the internet access quads on, there's not much much uh, you can do with that. Depends completely on your ISP again. Uh, it has a USB storage function, which I actually really like. So you can plug your USB stick into the side of it and use that essentially as a NAS, which is brilliant. More routers should have that feature. Uh, you can add a domain name to block, so if you want to be cruel, of course, you can put reddit.com in there, or if you're really cruel, just put imager. Uh, what are we doing at the moment? We're actually looking at the actual services you can block, so you can block telnet connections to your LAN, you can block everything you want. And you can even set the internet to block completely between these times, if you're really clever. Email, so you can set notifications on, so if maybe you want to use it as a parental control, block certain sites, and if certain sites are accessed, you can email them, and they can also email you supports and logs. It's brilliant. Uh, save backups, of course, so you can back up your router settings, set passwords, so you remember the defaults. And you can also do this a lot of this from the Android app, but not enough of this. You can't get as much detail as you can from being on here. As I said, the wireless on it is the main feature. It uses the 802.11 AC standard. Uh, you get a lot of settings with that, so your router's pin, WPS. I always tend to disable that. I don't think it's very secure. Someone comes in, just presses it. No, you don't want to do that. Uh, so port forwarding, again, so you can set your own servers up. Very good. Dynamic DNS as usual. Static routes out to certain places. 
It's very advanced, so more users won't need to use this setting. I imagine lots of you have stopped watching by now, but it's a very good router, and I really like all the features it comes with. This is the home router, and it comes on a complete GUI, which is easy to understand. Uh, it's a traffic meter, you can actually monitor how much traffic you're using as well. It's all brilliant. Enable any device, so you can actually set up to only use a certain USB device. So if someone else plugs something else in, that's fine. You just block it. Moving back to the USB device, so you can actually map the network drive. You click this button up here, then bring this over. You select the drive letter you want it to be. So in this case, W. Go to Browse on the right, or R for router. Reconnect at login. And you also want to connect using different credentials. And I've already selected this, so this is Routing Media USB Storage. If you click Network and you find that, you can use that directory. Connect using different credentials. You want to use the router's connections credentials and you will end up with a network drive being mapped to my computer so it comes up exactly as a hard drive go in there and we've got multiple files already ready DLNA is media streaming don't worry about that thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed the video